Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Today I'm flying to Nashville, Tennessee for the Multi-City Multicon. This is an expo that is a mix of video games and pop culture. In this video, I'll do a bunch of sightseeing around Nashville, checking out the city and doing some touristy stuff, visiting some local retro gaming stores, and spending the weekend at the convention. Plus, at the end of this video, I'll share with you some of the highlights of what I picked up. My wife and I are flying out of Seattle on Wednesday around 9.30 in the morning. And man, no matter how many times I fly past Mount Rainier, it never fails to impress. It's such a beautiful mountain, don't you think? And it's a long flight from Seattle to Nashville. It's about 2,400 miles. We don't land until 6 p.m. that night. But I love traveling and so does my wife and going to new places is always a really exciting. We get up the next day and we're gonna do a bunch of sightseeing around Nashville. And I heard that Gibson had a store downtown called The Garage. Well, I had to visit this place first. I had no idea that Gibson had a presence here. And I gotta tell you, it is very cool. So many guitars, amps, merchandise for Gibson guitar fans like myself. I ended up getting a sign for my game room, a mug, a shirt, and also a mini version of my black Les Paul custom guitar. Pretty neat for a fan like me, this is a great start to my trip. For lunch, we're gonna visit a restaurant called Biscuit Love. They are known for their Bonuts appetizer, which is warm donut holes with mascarpone cheese in a bed of blueberries. Oh man, these were so good. And Nashville is known for their hot chicken. So we ordered two items, one of them with gravy and the other one, of course, the hot chicken. And I gotta tell you, this is some of the most extremely juicy and spicy chicken I think I've ever had. It was very good. Another thing that Nashville is known for is music and they have an entire section of downtown dedicated to it. It's called Music Row. Basically, it's several city blocks packed with bars that are hosting live music, and it gets crazy busy. Lots of loud, drunk people walking around, having a good time. Honestly, it was a little overwhelming at times, especially when different bands were bleeding over into each other on the sidewalk. But man, it was quite the spectacle. It actually reminds me a little bit of Las Vegas. I will say that I was expecting it to be 100% country music, which I'm not really into, but I was happy to discover that there are a lot of rock bands that play live down there too. So I was definitely into that. We also checked out the walking bridge, which goes over the Cumberland River that connects downtown Nashville to the east side residential area. Plus it also takes you to the Nissan Sports Stadium. And this is very beautiful, a lot of fun. Also, it wasn't too crowded up here, which is nice. All right, it's a new day and we're gonna drive around the area and do some video game hunting. Today I'm meeting up with my buddy Jimmy who has the YouTube channel Lots of Games. He and I did a video several years back of Arcade Hidden Gems. I'll put a link to that in the upper right if you wanna check it out. We're gonna check out a place called McKay's and I was warned that this place is massive. As you can see here, it's a large warehouse that to me feels a lot like a half price books. And then mixed in with all of the print media and movies, they've also got several rows of just dedicated to video games. I found a bunch of 3DS games that I've been wanting to add to my collection. Check out the scratch area if you wanna maybe take a risk on something that's not necessarily perfect and you know, maybe save a little bit of money. You guys know me, I love music, and so I had to check out the epic music floor that circles the entire building. It goes on and on and on. There's so much music up here, it's amazing. I typically don't buy vinyl music when I travel because it can be kind of bulky and costly to ship home, so I didn't pick up any on this trip. 
But if you live near this store, well, you definitely want to check it out. I mean, they've got a little of everything. For lunch, we went to Peg Leg Porker, another local Nashville restaurant that was highly recommended to us. I really like the casual vibe here. We got the pulled pork sandwich with a variety of tasty sides, as well as some ribs and a bunch more. And yeah, it didn't disappoint. It was really good. Now we're gonna check out a retro gaming store called Game Trader. This was highly recommended to me as well. And as you can see here, it is a dedicated video game store that is packed full of games, both old and new. It's funny to me because people always mention, oh, there's no good video game stores in my area. But then I come to a place like this and I walk in and I'm like, wow, okay, I mean, it's legit. Lots of PlayStation 4 games, Xbox, Switch. I mean, pretty much everything that you'd be looking for. And so I think this is a really good store. I picked up a bunch of games that I'm gonna show you at the end of this video. Definitely worth checking out if you're in the area. It is now Saturday and the expo opens at 10 a.m. Now, one thing I wanna tell you is that they advertise this as a Nashville expo, but really it's 30 minutes outside of Nashville in a town called Lebanon. I'm sure they do that because it's cheaper to rent out the building, plus it has way more parking, but just be aware if you're like me and not really familiar with the area, I don't want you to be surprised. The Expo is a mix of pop culture and video games. Typically when I go to a retro gaming expo, it's mostly vendors selling games, but this was way more varied. Yes, there are a couple big tables with video games, but here there are actually more tables selling action figures, plushies, collectibles, artwork, and more. They also had a big row of original comic and graphic creators. And then there is a big room dedicated to tournament players. I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but I'm blown away by the popularity of game tournaments like these. When I was young, you know, video games were new and somewhat uncool. I mean, my friends and I loved them, but it wasn't exactly mainstream. And so it really warms my heart that young and old people play games like this. It brings people together. It's about being passionate about our great hobby. It's awesome. Also in this big room, they have gaming consoles set up for casual play as well, and then several areas for pinball, including a brand new 007 James Bond pinball table. They brought these preview machines here as a way to get feedback from players. Very cool. There was a decent selection of arcade games that are set to free to play. And it's funny because I still find myself wanting to get that high score, even though it's probably not gonna last longer than the weekend, but I still wanna have MJR up there at the top of, of whatever high score I can get. It's silly, but that's what I do. I mentioned that this expo is not necessarily just focused on video games. However, if you do look deeper, games showed up in several unexpected places. I found games on the floor or behind merch, almost like digging through a garage sale. I love this stuff. Here is probably the most hard to find thing that I found on the expo floor. It is the Visteon Dockable Entertainment System. This is a portable DVD player that was only sold in car dealerships. And it has a fully licensed from Nintendo Game Boy Advance cartridge slot. It was very expensive when it first came out and it's still pricey today. They also brought in some classic game developers and creators. I got to meet the original animator for the game Dragon's Lair, a game I was obsessed with as a kid. That was really fun. Later on that afternoon, John Riggs and I had a panel at 2.30, which was well attended and there was a lot of great questions. That was a lot of fun. But sadly, our trip to Nashville is coming to an end. It's time to get on a plane and head back to Seattle and show you everything I picked up. I'm gonna start off by showing you an Atari 2600 cartridge I got called Frankenstein's Monster. It's very rare that I find a 2600 cartridge I don't yet own. So I was very happy to find this. It's a pretty cool game and somewhat hard to find. So yeah, happy to have that in the collection. Next up is a game with a kind of unusual name. I'm gonna pronounce it as Horgahue? 
Horiyu? I have no idea, but it's on the Switch. My buddy Reggie mentioned this game in a previous pickups video that we did, and I'd never heard of it before. As you can see here, it is a horizontal side-scrolling shoot-em-up that is pretty fun. I played a bunch of this so far, and I've really enjoyed it. I have a decent collection of shooters on the Xbox 360, but I didn't have this one, and I am a massive fan of this series. Very happy to have found a copy of this great game. Dead or Alive Dimensions on the 3DS. My quest for 3DS games continues, and this is one I did not have. It's a pretty cool fighting game that has some great 3D graphics on the handheld. I like this one a lot too. I'll be honest, I bought this because of the really cool 3D lenticular cover. How cool is that? And it just happens to be a pretty fun action game where you play as the famous shark, eating other fish, terrorizing boaters and swimmers, and a lot more. It's pretty hilarious. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, also on the 3DS. Probably not the best Turtles game, but because it's on the 3DS, I had to have it. It's a beat-em-up, and I would call it decent. Big Bang Mini. The gimmicky covers really work because this one caught my eye too. It's not terribly exciting, but worth a look if you're interested in something a little different. I'm not really crazy about these games where you have to grow crops and cook and do that sort of stuff, but I did want this because, again, it's on the 3DS. There weren't a lot of big box PC games at this expo, but here is a naval strategy game from 1992 that I did not own. It was gifted to me by a fan of the channel. And check it out, it still has its original notes in the box. I love it when I discover stuff like this. Thanks so much. Here we have Ark the Lad collection on the PlayStation 1. This was given to me by my buddy Jimmy. Dude, I really appreciate it. I did not have this in my collection. And I've been playing a lot of PS1 games lately. And look at all the extra goodies that are included in here. So great, dude. Thank you so much. A few game development legends were at the show selling their brand new Atari 2600 game called Circus Convoy. David Crane, who made the original Pitfall, Gary and Dan Kitchen, who created the original Ghostbusters, Ikari Warriors, and a ton more, worked on this amazing release. I'm blown away when I'm around these guys, and this game definitely lives up to their reputation. Basically, it's a mix of Keystone Capers, Pitfall, with adventure game elements. It's pretty sophisticated for an Atari 2600 game. And it comes with an original cartridge, a full color manual, there's posters and other goodies. Highly recommended. So anyways, guys, that is my trip to Nashville, Tennessee for the Multi-City Multicon. As you can see from this video, I did a lot of really fun stuff while I was there. Nashville is such a big part of US history, and so it was a real pleasure and honor to finally get out there and see the city for myself. Everybody I met was very cool, very welcoming, and my wife and I just had an absolute blast. I want to thank you very much for watching my video. Thank you for subscribing and take care.